We left Amarillo, Texas that morning very slowly. The roads were icy and snowy, um, but once we got on the highway, it wasn't too bad. Um, we ended up seeing the beautiful wind turbines, a turned over truck, and then trucks um, with the wind turbine pieces on it. It was really cool, um, but we made our way to New Mexico. and I got four for ten if you buy a pack like that and waited for someone to take them out of the thing the warming thing Ross will often pull over or stop really fast for me to do um, different pictures because he knows how much I enjoy it we got to New Mexico we were so excited because this was our first time there and we were excited to camp there but everything was covered in snow we ended up um, almost jackknifing the trailer and the truck just to make a U-turn at the end of this road. So on to Colorado. We now this is why you come to Colorado. Colorado. <laughs> wow. I think God just wanted us to go that way. He knew this is what we were needing. Yeah. This is the difference. Hey, listen. Right, this look. is a tipping point for cars, so please... Slow down. Uh, By the time we got closer to our destination, we were a little unsure of what it was going to look like or how hard it was going to be to get into this boondocking spot. So we decided to just lay low and stay at the Cracker Barrel in the closest town, which was Pueblo. The next morning, we woke up and drove into Canyon City, and it was beautiful. The mountains were 360 and it was just such a gorgeous drive into the area where we were going to stay. By the time we got up to the top, some of the sites before were kind of small, so we wanted to scope out a little bit more. Ross grabbed Emily's bike out of the back of the truck and rode down the road. We were scared to take the trailer with us because we didn't know what we were going to run into. Ross thought the roads were a little too sketchy, so we ended up backing all the way up to Site 5, which was towards the front a little bit. Um, it was a little bit smaller than we'd like, but it was our first boondocking spot, so we were really excited. We had our generator hooked up so we could charge the batteries. We had our WeBoost, our tent, our solar, power, our solar panel, and the water hooked up. It was such a beautiful area. We couldn't believe we were doing it for the first time. This site is a lot bigger and a lot less cactus for cold to fall in. So we're gonna move up here. It's just right up the road. Let's go see what site number it is. This is site number seven. And there is another site number six right there, but it's really tiny. It must just be for a tent. But this one is a primo spot. It's huge. And there's more sites up the road. And apparently it goes in a circle this way somewhere. We didn't we haven't gone that far yet.
Daddy can't park right here. He'll block everybody. Huh? He's gonna block everybody. No, it's not. Yeah. Oh, we hit him. He hit us, and we not go walk over here. Yeah. Spin. Holy, look, this is the prickly bush, okay? You have to be careful. What are you trying to do, beefcake? Huh? What are you trying to do, Cole? Where are you taking that? To your campsite? Come with me. Come with you? Yeah. Okay. A big rock for your campsite? Yeah. Get your butt. I think what made our first boondocking experience so much more memorable was the beautiful sunrises and sunsets that we got to see over the mountain ranges. The sky would just fill with just amazing colors and it was just such a neat experience being that high and being able to just watch the sky change every day and every night. This is our first boondocking experience and we were definitely hooked. We were so excited for the next place that we were going to go and we knew that this is, this is the type of camping that we loved. There's just something about being on your own, being able to sustain your own rig, and knowing that you can do it without having to hook to power or water. It's just such a freeing experience and we totally recommend everyone to try it. And like we've told other people, is not for everyone. It's not 100% easy. I think with each place we boondock and each different type of climate that we run into, you learn more and more about what you can and can't do, where you need to be, what things are drawing too much power. We'll share more on that later, but we wanted to share our first boondocking experience.
thanks so much for watching our video all the way to the end. If you liked it, please hit the like button. And if you haven't subscribed, go ahead and hit that subscribe button so you know the next time we release a video. Thanks so much, and we'll see you at the next place.